Hi, and welcome to an online webcast for fourth grade social studies. This webcast is intended to provide fourth grade teachers instructional strategies to teach the Georgia standards of excellence. In this webcast, we will discuss ways to study the significant historical figures mentioned in our fourth grade social studies GSC. Our essential question for this professional learning session is, how can we best help our students investigate and report on people of historical significance? We're going to go through each of the standards that address specific people fourth grade students are responsible for learning. An idea of how to introduce these people to your fourth graders will be shared. We will also discuss two activities your students can do to go a little deeper in their understanding. The first element of the first history standard for fourth grade focuses on the events of the road to revolution we will address, however, who the Sons of Liberty and the Daughters of Liberty were in order to understand the motivation and effectiveness of their activities. As an extension of their learning, you may want to introduce your students to specific members of these groups like Samuel Adams and Mercy Otis Warren and their specific contributions to the Patriot cause. The second element of 4-H1 is full of people our students will get acquainted with Notice the element states describe the influence of key individuals and groups during the American Revolution. Note the focus is primarily on each of these men's roles in the events leading up to and during the Revolutionary War. All other biographical information is extra and can be used for extension purposes if you so choose. In 4-H2, our students are asked to identify the major leaders of the Constitutional Convention. James Madison, George Washington, and Benjamin Franklin. While Washington and Franklin were studied in the previous unit, the shift of attention is turned to their roles as leaders in the framing of our nation's constitution. James Madison is regarded as the father of the constitution. The only explicitly mentioned people in 4-H-3 are Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, the leaders of the expedition to explore the Louisiana Purchase. Two notable members of that expedition group were Sacagawea, a Shoshone woman, and York, Clark's enslaved African-American valet. The purpose of this element is to describe how the nation grew geographically. However, the attention to the details about the lives of the men and women involved in the territorial expansion are left up to you and your students. When your students are learning about Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Tubman. Keep in mind the aim is to understand them through the lens of their roles in the abolitionist and suffrage movements. Our Civil War historical standard is full of people our students will get to know. Notice the element states describe the roles. The focus is primarily on each of these men's roles in the Civil War. Again, all other biographical information is extra and can be used for extension or enrichment purposes if you so choose. One way to introduce students to a person of historical significance is by using an inquiry learning approach. You can do this by sharing a picture of that historical person. The one we've chosen as an example here is King George III riding on a white horse. First, give your students some time to look over the image. You may even want them to use hand lenses to identify finer details. Next, ask them the overarching question, what do you see? Explain that you're not asking them to interpret anything right now, just what they observe. Then, ask them the second overarching question, what does it mean? In other words, have them infer what those details mean in light of the overall image. The third question, why does it matter? Can either be asked if you feel your students have a good grasp on what's going on in the image, or you could wait to ask when you add quotes from or about the person being studied. Speaking of which, adding quotes for students to read and consider is another layer in the inquiry process. What makes this inquiry process of learning so wonderful is that after reading the quotes, your students will probably have more questions than answers. It's great because they will be motivated to figure out what it means, thus setting them up for more enduring understanding. When students ask and find the answers to their own questions, this deepens their learning considerably more 
than when we, as teachers, ask all the questions. Be sure to have them record their initial thoughts and questions to show a progression in their thinking. This can be done in their notebooks, on chart paper, using technology, or in whatever manner that fits your classroom setting. One way to set up this inquiry learning in your classroom is by placing a set of images and quotes related to a particular person in a Ziploc bag or a manila envelope. You may wish to place a card with the three overarching questions mentioned earlier in each envelope as well. Make a packet for each person in the unit you're studying and place these around the room. Place your students in inquiry groups to make their way around the room to begin investigating each of these people. Make sure they record their questions and thinking in some way. After your students have gained some basic knowledge of a set of people, you can have your students do a rank and reason activity. If you are familiar with the sports weekly power rankings, then you have seen this concept in action. For example, news outlets like Sports Illustrated and ESPN rank the most powerful teams in Major League Baseball each week and give a reason for the way they rank each team. This is depth of knowledge awesomeness. Making judgments and using evidence to justify their reasoning is an effective way to ensure engagement and more enduring understanding. The first step is for you to give your students an open-ended question that leads them to rank a group of people. In this example, it's, who was the most influential person of the American Revolution? The question is designed to have no right answer. We recommend you have your students work in groups to come up with a list. This really helps to support those with more limited communication skills. As they work together, students must think critically and provide justification for their rankings. After an appropriate amount of time for them to complete an initial ranking, have groups combine to share their thinking. This is where it gets exciting. They begin to have many debates over their choices. Please encourage them to be great listeners and open to changing their minds. This thinking you expect them to do is much deeper than you would get if you simply handed them a worksheet to complete. Another activity for your students is called hero or villain. First, discuss what the terms hero and villain mean. Then, ask them if a person's point of view determines if a historical person is a hero or a villain. Give them the literary example of Captain Hook. To Peter Pan and his Lost Boys, he's quite a wicked villain who seems intent on getting rid of Pan permanently. However, to Mr. Smee and the other pirates, he's a strong leader who helps them rule Neverland. It's all about perspective. Once again, students must think critically and provide justification for their responses. The purpose of this activity is not for our students to find and focus on negative aspects of historical people we are studying. Rather, it's to have them understand that history has more than one side and how we view those people has a lot to do with our own beliefs and ideals. Thinking like a historian, which is what we want to encourage our students to do, involves trying to see events and people from different perspectives to have a deeper understanding. George Washington was a hero to our nation, but he was not regarded as a hero by British troops at the time. Harriet Tubman's sacrifice and courage made her an abolitionist hero but her determination and persistence made her a villain to slave owners. William T. Sherman's march to the sea made him a hero to Union supporters eager for a faster end to the Civil War. He was most assuredly a villain to Georgians, whose property was mercilessly destroyed as his soldiers blazed their way from Atlanta to Savannah. We hope these videos help provide the helping hand you need to teach social studies. Be sure to look for more videos in this series made especially for fourth grade teachers.